Cybertruck is pretty big, but I think in America it's going to be even bigger. But is it too big for Europe? Is it even going to be legal in Europe? Well, if only I had a European I could ask about that, who mm. is a pretty gigantic Cybertruck fan and aficionado. Uh, let's talk about it. I'm Brian. Welcome to my Tesla weekend. <laughs> So I got Jan with me here, as I do sometimes, because I've seen some crazy claims that the Cybertruck is not going to be legal. It's not going to be legal in Europe. Uh, let's figure out if that's even if that's even the case. Let's start with uh, the weight. What is the weight limit for a vehicle on a normal driver's license? Yeah, so thanks for having me at first, Brian. Uh, I'm always glad to be here. But let's start with the driver's license because I was shocked when I saw the VIN decoder where they actually shown or leaked the specs of the Cybertruck. But I was Googling what does gross weight mean and uh, the weight classes they, they introduced and said and talked about. And to my surprise, it was having the functioning weight limit. That's the, the cap of the car, the 8,000 pounds that we saw, 8,000 to 9,000 pounds for the dual motor. And I think it was up to 10,000, I think, for the tri-motor. I'm, I'm not sure. Something around that ballpark. And I thought, okay, good. Because the weight limit for the driver's license is 3.5 tons in Europe, actually. And I was shocked that I have to, oh, God damn it, I have to make a semi-truck license to drive the Cybertruck. But no, actually not. The Cybertruck seems to be lighter than we thought, um, than I thought, at least. <laughs> and I'm pretty glad that this happens because uh, it's below 3.5 five tons, but without passengers and everything, of course, it's around 3,000 tons or 3,100 tons. Pounds. Pounds. Oh, oh uh, three and a half tons. No, 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 no. Three and a half tons. tons. Sorry. Yeah. And uh, I have to mm -hmm. look up the weight <laughs> again. So what mm -hmm. happens is with the gross vehicle weight, it's the curb weight plus the passengers plus the cargo. And so what you end up with is if it exceeds 7,000 pounds, you need a different license. But there's no reason you couldn't just say, hey, guess what? The European spec cargo weight limit yep. is 800 pounds. There we go. Done. Done. Exactly. Ship it. Ship it. And that might be a contentious point, but even still, even if you had to get a truck license, there are people who would, I don't know how, how many <laughs> cyber <would>. trucks, <laughs> yeah, right? I don't know how many cyber <laughs> trucks you would sell, but the number would be higher if you can avoid that. But yeah, even if you can't avoid it, is it even going to be road legal? So let's start with the lights have different, the, the turn signals can't be read. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so. true. So the turn signals is a huge issue. This can't be legal. But wait a second, Tesla already sells vehicles in Europe. Uh, how, how are the colors of the turn signals? Oh, they're actually amber or yellow. Yeah, interesting. That's, <laughs> that's what they're going to do with the Cybertruck. So this is no issue at all. What could be an issue, what's pretty interesting is, of course, the headlights. The, the front lights are a little bit special because we have pretty tough regulations in that sense. It's also about the high beams that's very important there. And we've seen some pictures of the Cybertruck where the trunk was opened and we could see more of the lights because there is a small bar like in between the plastic bumper and the headlights that you or the light bar that you see on the edge of the Cybertruck front. And we can see that there is also the fog lights over there. And I could see that there is the placement actually to, to install high beams or something like this. Or we have to hope that the European regulations are uh, be a little bit more yeah, open to that because in Europe we have pretty strong high beams, actually. And um, I think it's even way stronger than in the US. According to AAA, they are stronger. And if they were mm -hmm. mounted higher and stronger, it would be potentially an issue. But if you look at that light bar where the top headlights are on the Cybertruck, it looks to be about the same size as the gap beneath the front lid. So maybe they have thought of this who knows? Uh, what about the size of the truck? Is it too big? Is it too wide? In Europe, we have those <laughs> very small Roman <laughs> roads that are paved by hand that we cannot fit a truck onto our small roads where we walk with our hand carriages uh, around. So 
of course the Cybertruck can fit on, on European roads. And I hate this when people say something like this, that they assume, of course, we have old towns. We have historic towns that are thousands of years old, especially in Italy, for example, and south in the south of Europe, especially like in Spain and stuff, of course. But we also have highways. We have big streets, of course. And wait, guys, do we have delivery vans? Yes, we have them. We have sprinter vans. We have uh, also semis and everything. So, of course, there are roads. But could you drive around in Ireland somewhere in a small town or something like this or a medieval town? Yeah, it's difficult. But <laughs> you've also visited Europe. And we talked about that like a few episodes back already about this topic as well. Of course, you've also seen big buses driving a around in the Black, uh, for example, in the Black Forest, where it's very curvy and it's gonna move around there too so the the size is yeah. not an issue actually 100 no issue inch at all. wide tour buses 100 inch wide yeah. that's uh <laughs> three meters wide and yet they still manage to navigate those city streets even in the old parts of historic areas yeah they don't do it well it's not comfortable but good no. news yeah. you're almost two feet narrower and most of your life will be spent on pretty modern roads. Europe, I don't know if people know this, has built new roads in the last <laughs> thousand years. So uh, I'm not, I, I now the, the last big one that I've seen is safety. Is it going to meet pedestrian crash safety considerations? Do you know mm -hmm. anything about that? Um, that's what we have to see. We need the crash tests. Just we need the crash tests. We need to see that. I assume they already changed the design of the front. Why did they shorten the Cybertruck? Why isn't it as steep and pointy as it was before? I mean, the front really changed. I mean, they took away some inches there. It was way more uh, steep and arrow-like almost, of course, and also very straight in the front. If you look at the front and then it was pretty straight and now it's curved. Why is that? Hmm, probably pedestrian safety, in my opinion. And I also assume that um, the, the front will have a little bit uh, lighter metal or something like this that's more crumbly. I, I don't assume it's the same as in this on the side or not as thick. You could say maybe the steel is a little bit thinner there. I could see that really much um, like from the front that it's a little bit more lightweight because that's it. And also the plastic, uh, we've seen the plastic bar below also got a little bit bigger or like it's higher and everything a little bit changed the front. So I think it could be possible, but we need the crash test. We cannot, I cannot assume that. We can't, but we do know that again, Buses are already legal. Lorries are already legal. Yep. The F-150 is legal yeah. throughout all of could, Europe, I think, at this point. Yeah, yeah. And this and could so, eat a human. That just like, it yeah. just eats the human if, if, if there, we have a collision. Yeah. I am not convinced that that is a deal breaker. Mm -hmm. And if it is, like you said, there are ways to soften the front further to make it a mm -hmm. have a little bit more give. Yeah, we will have to wait and see. The bottom line is anything, getting hit by any vehicle is going to ruin your day. Mm -hmm. uh, I At think least. That's, <laughs> I think that's the big takeaway here. So what's left, I mean, it's the big mm -hmm. thing to remember is the best accident is no, is accident. no accident. Yeah, exactly. And you've got best in class collision avoidance systems, despite what some competitors, and I know he doesn't like to be called that, will say about Tesla's pedestrian awareness, it's very good at avoiding pedestrians. I showed a Optimus bot, Tesla location, I made a whole video about it, and uh, someone on X said, if it doesn't move, it's not a robot, it's a mannequin. And I said, well, don't tell Clown O'Dan or he'll try and run it over. So <laughs> the th thing to remember is all of this has been thought about by people who are paid to think about it, who are much smarter than you and me probably, but definitely smarter than these jackals on, on X. All of these considerations have been considered. And I put a lot of confidence in people who actually live in the place where we're discussing, which in this case happens to be you mm -hmm. so that's great yeah uh, and yeah we will keep an eye on this as it develops i think we should revisit this discussion uh mm -hmm. in a week or so yeah. when we can see i assume we will get to see on november 30th yeah. the crash test uh worthiness of this vehicle and hopefully mm -hmm. someone will have the presence of mind to ask uh will this be available in other parts of the world i would love mm -hmm. to ask that question i am not going to be at the event but i that will does. be I will be at the uh, before, during, and after party uh, hosted by 
Zach and Jesse from Now You Know. They've been gracious enough to invite me. They, uh, you know, game recognizes game, I guess you could say. And they uh, <laughs> would be crazy not to have me, I would say. So it'll be a lot yeah. of fun. And uh, there'll be endless people there at a lot of events in the days surrounding it. I may attend some of those as well. It'll be a lot of fun. Perfect. Yeah. And so, one thing I yes. wanted to, 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 to add for the end, maybe... We've also seen the camera placement of the cyber. Sorry that I jump around. That's right. There. No, please. But yeah, the, the front camera um, is also placed right next to the American license plate holder that we can see this area which is carved out. And for the European one, we might have to check in the showrooms for anyone who has an iPhone camera or something that can scan with the LiDAR and maybe you can measure the distance from the front bumper. That's something I really want to know. Maybe you can write that down into the comments when you did that. Anybody uh, who, who went to the showrooms and to see, because of course this can't be obstructed by the license plate. A European license plate is small and long not as the Americans' mm -hmm. license plates that are more square, I would mm -hmm. say. So let's see, but we have to see the distance. This could also be an indicator if they have Europe in mind, but not an actual problem for European market. Maybe they have to adjust the Cybertruck a little bit. But one thing I want to get off my chest for the end is, of course, Use Brian's referral link that he gonna get invited into those events that it's undeniable that, oh, I got my Tesla points here that I can spend on an invite. Let's do that. <laughs> for that would be great. That would be great. So I don't miss the next one. I yeah. only <laughs> the next have, cyber truck yeah, runs. I've only had the referral <laughs> yeah. link for a short time now. There will be more events in the future. I'm sure at some point, uh, Tesla will invite actual people to it instead of just suggesting, <laughs> instead of just saying, yeah. Hey, if you guys got a plus one, invite somebody important. because we ain't gonna. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah, they'll get it sorted out. They'll figure it out at some point, I'm sure. So guys, what did we miss? What did we misunderstand? Tell me why the Cybertruck is definitely going to be illegal wherever it is you live. <laughs> And uh, for everyone else, you know, uh, like, subscribe, do the usual things. Uh, check out Jan on Tesla Fix. He uh, has a pretty good idea what he's doing. And uh, uh, for everybody else, stay tuned, stay juicy. And I can't wait to hear from you clever robots from your own Cybertruck. Hopefully. Bye-bye. <laughs>